Hello and welcome to IABM TV. I'm Lorenzo Zanni, Head of Insight and Analysis at IABM. Today we're going to have a look at trends uh, in produce and we are joined by Steven Sonitz, uh, VP Product Marketing at Skyline Communications and Andrew Worman, Director of Player Solutions at uh, Harmonic. Uh, let me start from you, uh, Andy. Um, from a very general question, what do you see as the main driver of change uh, in uh, producing content production? Well, we see a, a, a couple of, I guess, key trends. There's a lot of interest in various types of remote production um, and also a lot of activity around people wanting to use more IP technologies, yeah. so uncompressed over IP, some compressed OP technologies. But really moving away from more uh, the more conventional SDI type interconnectivity and being able to use more more IT versus proprietary connectivity. Interesting, Steven. I think indeed uh, what I see is a lot of drive to uh, let's say reduce costs, yeah. to build uh, or bring more flexibility and agility in the organization and in the productions. Um, Indeed, the uh, the tool set to get uh, to that kind of more flexible operations is indeed driven by the migration to all IP infrastructures, uh, which is gradually coming into place. Yeah. There's there's a, a couple of networks up there. A lot of events are ca really kicking off, and I expect this will continue to grow. Uh, and of course, all of that will bring a lot of uh, cost reductions with it as well. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned and the remote production, mm -hmm. so. Uh, what do you think about that in terms of does does he, he allows to broadcasters to cover more events uh, uh, sometimes at a lower cost uh, but uh, we've seen that adoption has been slower than expected uh, what what are the challenges of uh, remote production and what, what are the the problems to be solved well, I think in, from our perspective we actually see a variety of takes on what remote production is yeah the normal sort of thing is that they do not want to send a lot of operators and yeah. they don't want to build facilities for remote production. Um, so particularly game, uh, big events like summer games and this sort of thing, the way people are going about it has changed quite dramatically. Yeah. Uh, in our case, we, we provide a lot of infrastructure um, for those sort of things, but the way we connect is totally, trans is totally transformed in the last decade. So a lot of workflows are done based on proxy-based editing or they'll do things with lower resolution versions yeah. of the final assets in order to make it more efficient. Um, and then more generally, there's a lot of trends towards um, having editing and, and other functions done in the home locations yeah. in general. Um, sometimes even operators working from home yeah. Um, on the remote connections using more and more of internet-based technologies. Yeah. So we get a lot of people asking us, you know, how are we going to make those sort of things work? Yeah. And you mentioned IP as well. Uh, how do you see adoption? Do you see it uh, gaining momentum uh, at the moment from your perspective? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think uh, it's been a little bit of a slow start. Yeah. Uh, mainly, I believe, on the on one hand, standardization still have to be put in place. Yeah. Eh, to process these uh, special high bitrate streams, eh? it's still video, it's still media, so the special care has to be taken there on an IP network. It's been a little bit of a slow adoption, also what I hear on the show floor here uh, as well again this year, uh, because there's still quality issues out there. There's still things happening in the network that may come unexpected. Yeah. Um, so what we bring there is, is, is uh, much more visibility in what is happening and uh, what is about to happen. Um, as an example, one of the technologies that goes together with IP is, uh, uh, is a clock to tie all the signals together. It's called uh, the PTP uh, clock as an example. Well, we see that people started off without decent monitoring of the configuration, the performance, yeah. and the KPIs of that signal, of these signals in the, in the, in the network. Uh, they basically uh, got off air uh, very soon. Eh? So uh, now we're delivering solutions to give full visibility on every uh, IP flow in the network, uh, full visibility on this critical PTP signal yeah. that crosses the network. And I think having that visibility and control will really give the assurance to the teams that uh, this technology is actually ready uh, to put into full uh, production, so to speak, at full scale. Yeah. Um, 
What's your view, Andy, on IPv? You mentioned it before, but uh, yeah. if you wanted to expand on that, I, I have. You know, we have quite a few um, experiences of various kind in IP. I mean, in the, originally Harmonic started uh, in IP doing encoding for yeah. over IP with transport streams, and we still, of course, do this. And this app is pretty much how all compression systems work these days: is out based on IP inputs and outputs. In the uncompressed world, where you know, typically in production, that's what gets used the most. Um, yeah, I mean, the adoption has been good for us. We've seen a huge uptake in systems being deployed this past year. Yeah. Um, probably about a quarter of our production and playout business was based on 2110 and 2022-6 yeah. from less than 10%. So it's yeah. a big, big jump forward in this past year. We anticipate a significant uptick this year as well. I don't think it'll be quite that big a jump. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing for, from that though is that we saw a very big difference between large systems um, and small systems and there really isn't people doing much in the middle. We tended to find that either they were doing um, dozens of channels or they were just doing a handful. Yeah. Um, there's not really that sort of middle ground. And the other interesting thing about this area is that most of the early adopters are actually jumping straight to all IP. Yeah. They're not in the hybrid or okay. migration path. But that's now not what we're starting to see. The customers that are coming along now, their challenge is that they're not going to do an all IP infrastructure. They're actually going to run a mix of SDI and IP. Yeah. So what was anticipated as being a ramp didn't happen initially. It was all like jumping straight to IP, but now this anticipation of people needing to mix SDI and IP, so yeah. from our perspective at least, that's what's actually starting to happen now. So it's almost like a second wave of early adopters. Interesting point. Uh, is that driven by new facilities as well? Filling new facilities? New facilities or um, rebuilds tend yeah. to cause people to think about just jumping to all IP. And it also seems to be very tightly linked to why large systems tended to be um, significant in the fact that they would just cut and do everything, so you had to have a large budget to do it. Yeah. The systems are quite complicated because yeah. of that, um, versus what we're starting to see now, which is actually a bit more mainstream activity. Yeah, yeah. And let me jump on another big topic in the industry on, on the cloud. How do you see cloud in the, in the production environment at the moment? So I think it's still early days, early days for cloud. Yeah. Um, I think people have some really good ideas about how to use the cloud. Um, we do uh, a moderate amount of cloud-oriented production. Mostly our area of expertise is really on the contribution and distribution yeah. when it comes to live. Um, so we tend to be towards the end of the live production process from that point of view. But it's interesting also from other angles, we work with partners that are dealing with remote production. They're using our storage and infrastructure products to drive the uncompressed workflows as well. How they're creating all sorts of workflow possibilities, some things that I, I hadn't guessed at, but absolutely yeah. genius ways of leveraging proxy and metadata and this sort of thing to drive very interesting workflows. Yeah. Stephen? But a cloud will come for sure in this environment. It's, it's a more difficult environment compared to the distribution. I mean, if you look into distribution use case, clouds is, is all around already. Of course, yeah. uh, it's easier to do and it, 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 it scales well. Um, but if you look into the production, uh, cloud is even a better use case, I would say, because it's all event-based processing. You don't need that capacity all the time. Uh, so uh, cloud uh, will, they be, will definitely be there eventually. I don't see it as much yet today, uh, but everybody talks about it. Um, yeah. It's really already very much uh, in use for file-based processing in the production domain, but for live production, I think eventually it will come uh, the mainstream. Yeah, and I'll tell you another thing I heard a lot today when talking about the cloud security. Is that still a concern for media companies going forward, going to cl towards cloud and IP? Do you see that as, as an important issue in the production environment? I would even say that uh, security is a bigger concern for, uh, let's say, broadcasters building an on-prem yeah. facility than it is on the cloud because Interesting. cloud yeah. providers are usually very, uh, let's say, talented in, they in setting up uh, the security, whereas broadcasters and, and IT teams within the broadcast organization may not have uh, that much of an experience and scale yeah. Uh, yeah, to, yeah. to manage that. 
Uh, so I see much more concerns uh, for people building on-prem yeah. IP infrastructures. Um, but again, what we do there is, is indeed giving that level of visibility uh, as well as automation. Yeah. Uh, very simple examples, somebody plugging in uh, a, a new router or device or an event or a uh, source or destination on the equipment, we can basically do things like automatically making sure that device is in a safe state, that there's no ports open that should not be open. Yeah. We would flush ACL lists as an example. Um, we would make sure that the software versions of all the elements uh, or versions that have been proved up front. So we, we have learned all these type of workflows from the telecom world and we are now putting them into the broadcast environment. And yeah. that's highly appreciated. Yeah, interesting. But still a lot of people mentioned security. So is it more of a cultural challenge, is it? I think some organizations are more diligent than others. Yeah. Um, I'll say from our angle, we, we see a lot of people, most people being far more um, aware of what the risks are um, yeah. and a, a variety of different strategies to deal with it. Um, we're very concerned, as you pointed out, about the, the pr issues on, on premise versus the ones yeah. that can take place in the cloud. In fact, one of the things we do is to make sure that uplinks to the cloud are secured on prem before they leave. So that angle of, yeah. of, uh, of risk is, is eliminated. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And uh, you talked about automation. Uh, yes. Let's have a look. Uh, let, let's talk about a little bit about that as well. And also, all the I try to distinguish what's real and what's hype in terms of AI, machine learning. Uh, yeah. uh, what's what's your work on that? Uh, what we uh, see today, and that's a snapshot of today, is that uh, as people migrate to an IP-based environment, uh, of course they look at automation at the same time. Uh, but the fundamentals of the workflows have not changed necessarily yet. Yeah. Um, as the functions will become smaller, uh, microservice-based processing, I think the workflows will have to change yeah. as well, otherwise you don't get the benefits of going into a, an architecture like that. And if you move into a microservices-based, uh, let's say, infrastructure, then automation and orchestration is key. It's going to be fundamental, even much more than it is today, fundamental to run the plans. Yeah. Um, how does AI play into that? Uh, it plays into that uh, increasingly, uh, I will say. I know there's a lot of fuss and buzz around AI on the show. Uh, there's a lot of companies claiming AI where they mean really deep learning or traditional learning or data analysis. I yeah. mean, there's huge differences between those technologies. Um, we have been working uh, on AI-based uh, automation since a couple of years, we have a de dedicated team to do that. Uh, but we are very moderate in, in saying, look, uh, we implement and we add AI capabilities at very small steps into all aspects of the operation. It's not going to be a big thing that enters the industry. Yeah. It's going to be a step-by-step -step approach. Right. And we are just at the start of the journey. Interesting. Andy? I'd say on the, on the AI and machine learning side, we're on the same page as you. We, yeah. we use it appropriately and, and we try to actually be very clear about you know what we really mean yeah. when we're talking yeah. about it. I mean, we obviously use it a lot in compression technology, that's that's our area. Um, and it's it's produced some very unusual results. I mean I was very very intrigued by you know the visual perception system is an unusual thing and it doesn't necessarily yeah. do what you anticipate. So you know in area area and it does actually apply to production yeah. in, in that you know what the eye follows is not really what you might necessarily think about in terms of compression or or things that you might want to actually know in a production environment is actually has turned up some interesting data it's, it's quite fascinating it is it is a fascinating area but we're just at the start exactly yeah. so that's the, that's, the, that's the very interesting yeah. thing about it because yeah. we're so new yeah. in this area yeah. and what's interesting we talked a lot about efficiency in production mm -hmm. and what about quality is that less important uh, talking about 4k HD, talking about immersive formats as well i'm drawing a lot of stuff in in the mix yeah. uh, is that as important as it used to be or is uh, that less important i think it is is absolutely Important. I mean, this, it, you have to think about the number of production yeah. things that happen in 4K and people looking beyond 4K. But the, what actually will be delivered is not going to be 4K. It'll be yeah. 1080i, 1080p. It'll be sort of web and mobile. But they're not doing it that, for that reason. They're doing that 
they have assets that can be reused in the future. When you can down convert that, you actually get clearer, crisper images. And so the result is all about quality, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, even with things like compression systems and using visually lossless compression, it's still all about quality. Yeah. Um, it's just being more efficient about the infrastructure you're using. Interesting. Um, but yeah. no one wants to give away the quality part yeah. at the production level. We can be selective when we get down the chain. Yeah. That's okay, but quality in the production, that's key. The values are still high. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephen, do you want to add something on that as well? Well, from, from our, our perspective, perspective yeah. we're not touching the yeah. video, but being in this business uh, uh, for quite some time, I fully agree with my colleague here. I mean, quality will remain king and it's so important. So in production, that's your source content. It needs to be good. And even if, it's not, if it cannot be displayed at full quality today, it will have to be displayed at full quality to the end customer later on. Yeah. Absolutely. So last question to, to both of you. Uh, what's coming next for uh, content production technology and what's your company planning for for the long term? What we're planning for is continue our uh, paths towards uh, full automation and orchestration of workflows. Yeah. Um, we have invested already heavily into being able to manage, uh, let's say, cloud-based infrastructures and to be ready to manage those fine-grained microservices and tie all of them together in a seamless way. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely one uh, area that we are investing in. Um, another area that we are investing in is, is of course, the AI aspects, yeah. but that's going to be a roadmap of, let, let's say, the, uh, many, many years to come. We're just at the, the starting point uh, there. And last but not least, it's all aspects of building a platform that really allows uh, collaboration across different teams that may be all located uh, in a single location, multiple locations working from home, uh, etc. So tying uh, that collaboration, collaboration uh, yeah. these teams together is uh, what we want to accomplish. Yes. Andy? Yep, so we, we spend a lot of our time focused on media over IP. Um, that will continue. Um, 2110 in the back, great. Um, now it's all about making it easier to connect things. Um, we actively encourage that. I think you know that's critical in production, in particular because it is an environment that changes a lot. Yeah. Potentially, in, in certain cases, it's changing several times a day. You know, that, so there's that angle. Um, other areas. When it comes to compression and those sort of technologies, once you're done with the production, that's going to continue as well. But then higher resolutions are also coming. Yeah. You know, 8K, we're having some fun experimenting with that stuff. Yeah. That's, that's all good. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a good case for it, I suppose. Yeah. You know, I, I quite enjoy looking at that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think really a lot of our focus is on the IP and also on using more commodity IT. Yeah. Uh, we, we're a software company. Yeah. That's a in fact, both of us have that in common. Yeah, yeah. um, people think uh, a lot about storage and encoding and cloud as being hardware oriented, but really we're using commodity IT products. Um, we have commodity network switching and routing control. That's what the future is all about in this particular area. Thank you very much. Very interesting discussion. Thank you very much. And for more information, please visit the IABM website. Thank you.